hi and welcome to today's video where we'll be talking about trusting your gut. It will be a good idea with this show if you download the graphic so you can follow along. You can print this off or pull it up on your screen. You'll find the link for that below the video. So how is gut feeling working for you? Can you develop it to be more in line with your life? Can you put more trust in your gut feeling? Okay, so the critical thing here is to keep in mind that when we're talking about gut feeling is to understand where those feelings are coming from. They're coming from our subconscious mind. It's our body reacting to signals sent from our subconscious. The physical place or mental space that we find ourselves in is being interpreted on a conscious and unconscious level and being sent to us. That information is delivered back to us as understanding. This understanding is often manifested through the body. This can cause a gut feeling, which can also be called instinctive knowing. If we understand how all this works, we will have more confidence in using our gut feeling and reacting to it. What's happening is that the subconscious mind is reacting into the body. The gut is picking up a constant stream of messages. Now, of course, when I talk about messages, we're talking about the chemical reactions of neurons, the firing of synapses. These are then picked up in our gut and we feel or sense something. Sometimes when using gut feeling, it's just right. We know it and we go with it. And that's great. But other times we're confused by it. It doesn't give us anything directly to work on. We don't have any clear communication. Often what you'll find is that when your gut feeling is out of kilter, just feeling off, it's because you're in a state of confusion or anxiety. If you're in a stressful situation, trying to make decisions relative to areas of your life, you may assume your gut is not reliable. Anxiety will be a killer of true signals. So stay calm. If you're using your gut to make decisions outside of the fight or flight response, you better make sure you're in a calm state of being. Gut indicators. Okay, so what do we get in terms of indicators? How do we feel this? What is going on? Now I've made a quick list, see the graphic for download, of a few things that I will experience. Now it's important to note here that if you follow what I say and wait for these feelings, that's the wrong approach. Nobody knows what you are going to be feeling. It's your gut. It will be down to you and how you experience your feelings. Chills and sensations. However, some more common things that you might detect are spine chills. This is a gut feeling, a reaction. Something is coming from the subconscious mind causing that gut reaction. Your gut feeling manifests as goosebumps. We've all had goosebumps over something. We'll often say to others, that's giving me goosebumps. And there's a nausea sensation. Nausea for me is essential because I will often get a rolling of the stomach. It's almost like seasickness, motion sickness, something like that. It's when my body feels a bit off kilter. When I feel this nausea, this feeling of being out of kilter, it's a warning for me. Do not continue on this path. Don't do that, whatever it is I'm doing. I now pay attention to this because if I don't, it will turn out bad or lead me away from the direction I should be going in. High alertness. Another thing can be on high alert. You suddenly become very alert to the situation you're in and to everything that's going on around you. I'm sure you've seen the wildlife programs where we see a gazelle eating away and minding its own business and suddenly it lifts its head up and looks around. The gazelle can't see the predator, but somehow it knows. This is primal and it's hardwired into us as well. The lion loses the chase. When the gazelle is not alert, when that alertness doesn't kick in, the predator is likely to win a meal. Inner warning. A state of high alert also leans into like a warning. When we have this sense of warning about doing something or not wanting to do something, or you just don't feel right about it. A warning is again manifesting in the gut and into guidance. Sometimes we can get direct guidance. You can have direct guidance. I mean, sometimes it just feels in our gut that this is right, the right thing to do. 
it wasn't something you planned. You didn't plan on meeting this person. You didn't plan getting this phone call or this job offer. But it just feels right. It's likely you're being guided. These are significant gut feelings to go with. And I'm sure you've met someone in the past and with a few minutes your senses are raised. You have a gut feeling that this person is right for you. In other times you have a gut feeling telling you this is not a good place to be in. This applies to any reactions that affect you. Remember, we can't stop the gut feeling. It's an automatic subconscious response. Chills, goosebumps, nausea, high alert, whatever it is you experience, it still comes. Ignoring your gut feeling. Now before we get into what you want to do with your gut feeling, let's look at what happens if we ignore it. Instead of reacting or reading your gut feeling, you go into denial of it. You don't want to read it. You don't want to understand it. You just go into denial and use your conscious mind to evaluate what it is. Maybe you are nauseous because of that cake you ate at lunchtime, or the extra coffee, or whatever your mind can come up with. Your conscious, rational mind cuts in, and you're happy for it to do that. You just want to get rid of the gut feeling. Using conscious mind analysis builds an increasing level of denial. You deny the access into your mind. You refuse the information that's coming through. Naturally, that builds up a precedent for it being unreliable. Rather than relying on your gut feeling that you shouldn't be here or be wherever you are, your conscious mind works out ways in which you can escape. You have bypassed, ignored what your gut could have done for you in a much more efficient way. You're trying to analyse why you're feeling this way. You're trying to rationalise it. And this causes more stress. What happens is that intellect from the conscious mind overrides the gut feeling and tries to get rid of it. Take an imaginary left path where you go into denial, where analysis and intellect override your gut feeling. What happens over time is we end up living lives where we are reactionary. We set up this negative feedback loop because we're not listening to our gut. We're not going with our gut. This type of living can cause stress and anxiety. Take an imaginary right path where we learn all we can about trusting our gut. How do we take action on this potent guidance that we have available to us? Well, one of the first things we must learn to become is expert readers. The starting point for that is to not default into denial. Instead, explore that gut feeling. If you've got chills, experience the chills. Goosebumps, nausea, whatever it is, experience it. You're training yourself. You're trying to understand the feeling, to bring it out to manifest it to a higher level, to add power to it. It's like dialing in higher current, adding more power to what you're experiencing. This is reading, reading the information by intensifying it. This intensifying experience gives you a greater understanding of what you're being guided to do. Acting on your gut feelings. Naturally, you'll have an urge to take action. Because that's what gut feelings are about, to take action. To stay where you are, to walk away, to take a particular action in business, to make that call. Whatever you're getting that gut feeling about, action must be taken. The danger here, though, is consciously making a plan for that action. Many people learning to trust their gut will say, OK, I like this, I, I will take action, but I need a plan. Don't make this big mistake. The gut feeling doesn't provide you with a fixed plan. It reacts to a situation and delivers a result. It's a bit like a ship's radar searching around looking for passageways and obstacles. Learn to take action, move forward with your gut. Do what your gut tells you to do. It doesn't matter what you may think you have to do. Follow the instruction of your stomach. Taking action means you will move forward. You're going from where you are now to a different place. A different place mentally, a different place physically. It doesn't matter. Just take action and keep moving forward. Adjusting. Adjustment is what you need to do as you're going forward. Imagine for a moment you're walking down an office hallway and people are at the doors that lead off into offices. You're walking forward and they're talking to you. These people are your gut talking to you. You're making adjustments as a result of feedback. You're making adjustments as you're moving forward down the hallway. The critical thing here is you move forward and you adjust on your way. 
What's happening here is that you are reacting to your gut feeling. This reacting provides a positive reaffirming feedback loop into your more conscious living. Your subconscious mind is guiding you through gut feeling. You are trusting your gut. You're getting used to this and the whole thing starts to take over and gain momentum. This is incredibly powerful for living the life you want to live. Go with your gut. Your gut knows more than you, certainly more than your conscious mind. So let's have a quick recap. Gut feeling? Amplify it. You are then going to take action. You will then move forward without a plan. You will then adjust on the way. This causes a feedback loop to give you more gut feeling, more trust in your gut going forward. Take further action and do not override with a plan. Trusting our gut brings us closer to a sustainable, intuitive life in closer contact with our core selves of who we really are. Check out the link below to download the graphic for this video. You might also like to check out other videos on creating smart goals and also a smart goals template video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so I can let you know when I post new videos. I'll catch up with you very soon.